what was I thinking about? I came up with man, I knew I should have wrote that. You know when you came up come up with good things while you're stoned and you should like write them down and you're like, "Oh, well, I need to write that down. That's such a great idea." Well, the thing is I'm it, not going to ever forget that. But the, I'm never going to forget that idea and then you forget it right at the time you need it. It's a show by Chris and Neil with all great movies. They are the real deal. We watch them all so you don't have to. It's movies that don't suck and some that do. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all ages, welcome to another episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. And today we are doing... Two movies? Is there two movies we're Just doing Just two today? movies, but one of them will be talked about way more than the other. One of them will be <laughs> talked... Actually, both of them will be talked about really well, because both movies are pretty good. The first movie that we're going to be talking about is a movie that came out just like a couple weeks ago at the theater. Kind of uh, a lot of people didn't know it was out there because we have like all these blockbusters going on. I think everybody went and seen Super Mario Brothers yeah, like that, three times. Yeah, yeah. I think that was the movie everybody saw. But um, it, it stars... The one, the only, you know her now as Black Widow, Florence Pugh. You just didn't want your baby sister to tag along whilst you saved the world with the cool kids. You weren't really my sister. And the Avengers aren't really your family. Why do you always do that thing? Do what? That thing you do when you're fighting. And the, like the... This this thing that you do and you whip your hair when you're fighting with the arm and the hair and you do like a fighting pose. It's a yeah. It's a fighting pose. You're a total poser. I'm not a poser. <laughs> oh come on! I mean, they're great poses, but it does look like you think everyone's looking at you like all the time. All that time that I spent posing, I was trying to actually do something good to make up for all the pain and suffering that we caused. I'm trying to be more than just a trained killer. Well, then you were fooling yourself. Because pain and suffering is every day, and we are both still a trained killer. Except I'm not the one that's on the cover of a magazine. I'm not the killer that little girls call their hero. Damn. Burn. <laughs> Burn. From Black Widow. Yeah. From Black Widow. She was, she's also a... Also in this... Go ahead. Uh, is uh, playing a counterpart to her. Uh, a good coming up uh, actress... Uh, she played in Freaky. Uh, she played in several other things. Uh, Celeste O'Connor. What are you doing here in Somerville, anyway? Honestly, my mom won't say it, but we're broke. We just got evicted, and the only thing that's left in our name is this creepy old farmhouse our grandfather left us in the middle of nowhere. No offense. I'm not offended. This place is a dump. So why do you live here? I'm fourth generation dumb. So. <laughs> Get out! What is that? I don't know. That is from Ghostbusters Afterlife. Ghostbusters, which she's actually part of the next Ghostbusters too. Good, already. I'm glad to hear that. Uh, uh, yeah, so um, also one of the comedic geniuses of all times, one of my favorite people that came from the good old world of Saturday Night Live, and every time I see her, I can only think one thing, sweaty balls. What's your name? There's nothing I like more than sweaty balls. Um, they're tasteful. I like to put them in my mouth. They're very delicious when you put sweaty balls in your mouth. Anyway, <laughs> Molly Shannon. My feelings would best be expressed in a monologue from the made-for-TV movie Portrait of a Teenage Centerfold starring Miss Laurie Singer from Footloose. If you must. It excites me, Daddy. Don't you see? I like it when the men look at me. You try to keep me trapped here in this small town like a little animal. But I am busting out, Daddy. I'm gonna see the world and the world is gonna see me. They're gonna see all of me, Daddy. All of me. Mary. All of me. Mary. Oh, Stop that. Stop that. What are you doing with my grandchild? From Superstar. 
from Superstar. Yeah. Molly Shannon from Superstar. Yeah. Now, the last person in this movie, um, the great, one of the greats, if not the one of the greatest actors of all times, the one, the only, Mr. Morgan Freeman. You've tried it your way for years, and your students can't even get past the minimum basic skills test. That means they can hardly read! They've given me less than one year, one school year, to turn this place around, to get those test scores up, so the state will not take us over to perform the task which you have failed to do, to educate our children. Forget about the way it used to be. This is not a damn democracy. We are in a state of emergency, and my word is law. There's only one boss in this place, and that's me. The HNIC. Are there any questions? Yeah, from Lean On Me. Lean On Me. Uh, that is the movie that got me to notice Morgan Freeman. So that's how young, when I was like, everything that guy wants to, does for the rest of his life. Because that was also the same year he did uh, Driving Miss Daisy. Oh, well, he, what you won an Oscar for. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like, that's the one he should have won the Oscar for. Let's just be <laughs> honest. That was an amazing movie. If you haven't seen Lean on Me with Morgan Freeman, and uh, literally it's that school was uh, ran over by gangs, and he tries to It sort of reminds it me of a, a, of a tougher, uh, uh, what's the movie with Edward James almost? Where you get that class learning algebra, what was that name? Whatever. Oh, Stand and Deliver. Yeah, yeah. It's like Stand and Deliver, yeah. Dangerous Minds, uh, you know, that kind of life. So, I think I like the Lean on Me, on me was more. before all those. Yeah. Oh, yeah, Lean yeah. on Me did best. And, but the movie we're talking about there, the first movie we'll review today is A Good Person, which I can't wait to talk about uh, this. Written and directed by Zach Braff. So we should mention that. Zach Braff, the Zach Braff, Garden State Zach Braff, you know. Scrubs, JD um, from Scrubs. <laughs> yes, yeah. I was trying to think of his name. I almost. But the second movie we're talking about, everybody, you're going to know it because everybody's talking about it. Yeah. And, of course, the guys who actually are the geeks that know the stuff, we definitely got to talk about it. Mm -hmm. And that is Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Now, how do you want me to do this, Chris? Okay. <laughs> this is going to take a little bit. Uh, let's just go through there. Because I, I, cause I literally, I tried to make these as short as possible. <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> this will take four minutes. I did. So you take I, a minute. I did. I did. Take oh, a so each one of them is like only 20 to 30 seconds. So first, here's the one, the only Star-Lord, Chris Bratt. Drop it. Uh, hey. I got city color. Drop it now. Hey, cool, man. No problem. No problem at all. How do you know about this? I don't even know what that is. I'm just a junker, man. I was just, just check us okay. out. You don't look like a junker. You're wearing rabbit to go. It's a, just the outfit, man. Ninja Turtle, you better stop poking me. What is your name? My name is Peter Quill, okay? Dude, chill out. Move! Why? Ronan may have questions for you. Hey, you know what? There's another name you might know me by. Star-Lord. Who? Well, Star Lord, man, legendary outlaw. Guys, move! I forget this. Yeah, from the first, like the first uh, Guardians of the Galaxy movie. Yeah, every single one that I gave you is the exact clip where we either get introduced or they become a guardian of the galaxy. Now, the reason not everyone is the exact one where the, cause there are one or two of them that those clips do not exist. And I do not want to break trade. <laughs> yeah. I don't want to be like, Hey, did, Hey, go to Disney plus and go grab this clip. <laughs> yeah. You know, like I know they're not. All right, let's go through the list of them. Let's get them done. Bradley Cooper is rocket. What a bunch of losers. All of them in a big hurry to get from something stupid to nothing at all. Pathetic. Look at this guy. You believe they call us criminals when he's assaulting us with that haircut? What is this thing? Look how it thinks it's so cool. It's not cool to get help. Walk by yourself, you little gargoyle. Look at Mr. Smiles over here. You like orange. Where's your wife, old man? What a class A prefer. <laughs> yeah, from uh, yeah, that's great. 
That's Guardians of the Galaxy. And that was Stan Lee he was talking about, mm-hmm. who is the gangster to great ace fever. Uh, Dave Batista's Drax. You dare! You know who I am, yes? They're Drax. The Destroyer. What? You know why they call me this? You've slayed dozens of Ronin's minions. Ronan murdered my wife, Hovet. And my daughter, Camaria. He slaughtered them where they stood. And he laughed! Well, her life is not yours to take. He killed my family. I shall kill one of his in return. Yeah, from, again, how you were introduced to Drax. Yep. Karen, Karen Gillian, Noob, uh, Nebula. Nebula. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Sounds fair. This is one fight you won't win. Let's head to the kiln. She's as sexy as a robot. I gotta be honest. Dude, she's awesome. Uh, yeah. She's awesome human being yeah. too, man. Uh, Zoe Zandalin as Gamora. Zoe Saldana. Yeah, that's what I said. Saldana as Gamora. It will be your doom. If this happens again, you'll be facing our father without his prize. I'm a daughter of Thanos, just like you. But I know Xandar. Ronan has already decreed that I... Don't speak for me. You will not fail. Have I ever? Yeah. Craglin, uh, Sean Gunn as uh, uh, Craglin. Thanks. Captain, now just show me how to work this thing. Well, the turny thing there makes the songs go up and down. Made by primitive people. That is primitive. Show you some of my favorites. It's got Traffic. That's really good. They have some good songs. Thin Lizzy is a group I like a lot. There's a lady on there named Alice Cooper that I like a lot. She seems kind of angry, but kind of like stuff how we felt when we were kids, you know? Cat. There's a cat. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> so the funny part about that is one, that's a deleted scene. They didn't have the zo- full zoom scene that I wanted. <laughs> uh two, traffic is not a band. It's what it was somebody's playlist <laughs> that they play in traffic. So he thinks all the bands that are under traffic <laughs> is the same band. And then the Alice Cooper mm-hmm. line, of course. Yeah. All right. Uh I got Nebula, I got Drax. Mantis. Let's um Mantis is next. I am Mantis. What are you doing? Smiling. I hear it is the thing to do to make people like you. What if you do it like that? Oh, I was raised alone on Ego's planet. I do not understand the intricacies of social interaction. Can I pet your puppy? It is adorable. Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a great scene. Yeah. All right, and then um, also, of course, the one, the only, Vin Diesel as Groot. I am 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 Groot. We are Groot. So many tears. <laughs> that first one. So was many tears there. in all those, yeah. in all those different ones. Uh, then I have one other person, uh, the villain, but uh, oh, you Chris, I'll let you take that one. Oh, man. <laughs> Shugudi Iwuji as the High Evolutionary. Every time I turn around, one of you is doing something fucked up. I thought Walla gave me soldiers. Instead, it's a fucking apple dumpling gang. <laughs> Classic pull. Hey, who are the apple dumpling gang? Incompetent dinguses. But they always triumph in the end. Fuck you, John. Jesus. You told Vigilante to kill Peacemaker's father? 
I didn't tell him to. I just kind of put the idea in his head. That peacemaker would be better off without his father. Well, his father is going to go to the authorities and tell him how he switched out the fingerprints. I was just trying to make the hard choice. Seeing as we're already losing Peacemaker's trust, how's he gonna feel when he finds out we manipulated his best friend into killing his father? It's Clemson Mern from Peacemaker. That's what his... That, that yeah, from clip. Peacemaker, yeah. which is the other James Gunn. Like, literally, James Gunn was doing Peacemaker before he was doing a volume three, and he was like, dude, you'd be perfect for this character that I'm going to do in volume three. And I'm nothing against James Gunn. I love the fact that he is so, like... He's like Quentin Tarantino. He's like, these are my dudes. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to use them in everything I'm ever doing. I think he got and, Palm to sign on for something in DC. Palm, the girl was... Yeah, and, and, and the other way around. Actually, during our spoiler section of this, because, guys, if you don't know this, uh, every time we do a comic book movie, <laughs> we do give a good 20-minute spoiler section at the end where I go over things. Because I, if you can't tell, because I have the uh, nice little poster up, but I am a comic book fan <laughs> i am i mean uh there's a whole filing cabinet in the other room that i'm actually gonna bring in here i think, yeah, think so, so that my wife has more room in the other room but um literally uh so i'll go over a lot of the easter eggs a lot of the flits just back and forth between but yeah but because, if you guys don't want to know that we give a spoiler like go, yeah we get we give a spoiler free and then we'll let you know yeah. we'll tell you before you jump in mm -hmm. don't worry we are not dicks like that we used to be dicks like that oh man but <laughs> but and then we got yelled at by a lot of people that but hey, we, dude. we stopped doing that 10 episodes in though now we're episode 270 it was, it was 20 episodes in bro <laughs> <laughs> it was like 20 weeks and we finally figured out how to do something <laughs> we're like it's like driving your car with no brakes for like a month and you're just like oh maybe i need brakes yeah maybe, maybe i need brakes maybe, maybe. All right, Chris, where can they find us at? You can find us online at oozonesook.net. We're at w2mnet.com. That's the W and number 2mnet.com. That's the network we're on. There's tons of other stuff there to do, so we, we, we have to check that out. We're on Facebook at facebook.com slash oozonesookpodcast. We're on Twitter at MTS Podcast. We're on Instagram at MTS Podcast. If you guys want to throw us a few shekels, become a patron, you might get some free extra stuff, uh, go to patreon, patreon.com slash oozonesook. Uh, if you guys want... Uh, merch, go to Bonfire to Carms, which means don't suck and something to do. You'll find stuff there. And if you guys want to send us an old fashioned email, info moves don't suck dot net or moves don't suck podcast at gmail.com, where you find podcasts from moves don't suck and something to do. You know who we talk about today. Today, we are going to talk about a good buddy of ours. Now, uh, years ago, um, when we were starting this whole venture, episode off, he 50. was nice and Episode 50 it was, yeah. exactly. Episode 50, we were not recorded from a bar he used to own called Pawn and Pint. Well, this man has now moved on to doing pop-up bars, and he's got not one, but two theme bars in Kansas City right now. And um, we're talking about, um, uh, Chris, say it for me, please. Vignettes Bar. Vignettes. First, we're going to talk about Vignettes Bar, which this month they are doing Bob's Bargers. Yes, Bob's Bargers. You can go down there, and the place is decorated. This is two of the bartenders uh, dressed like Linda Perfect. and Bob. Uh, like, the walls look just like it is like Bob's Burgers. It is like you walk in. This is this is the door to walk in. <laughs> is to the side bob's burgers and you can go there they got a full menu of drinks shots and stuff like that um to give you a little information here it is and this is what they say on their website um get ready the bleachers were excited to announce bob's burgers a one-of-a-kind themed popped up bar coming to vignettes in north kansas city from may 5th to june 17th join them uh, for their taste of bob linda tina Jean, and louise Kirkley and wholesome world filled with delicious burgers, specialty cocktails, and unforgettable memories. Save your menus inspired by Bob's famous burger of the day with options like baby can chive my car or burger or the foot feta ish burger. Quench your thirst with signature cocktails like the bad girl, Tina Rita and the Mortarini and horse medicine. Um, this is located on 2376 Armor Road, right next to Screenland yep, Armor, yep, yep. which is one of our favorite places to go in the entire world. Now, yep. the thing is, Edward, then I talked to him earlier today. The guy doesn't have one bar. 
The guy has two pop-up bars coming up. The next one is the unbearable weight of massive talent, a Nick and Pedro pop-up at 4601 uh, Shawnee Drive, Kansas City, Kansas, literally blocks away from Chris's address. I'll give you that. If you go to the bar, (laughs) tell me. I'll send you his address so you can go knock on his door late at night drunk. This is the only picture they have out there right now. Of the unbearable, and it's the Nicholas Cage with the two guns from the unbearable weight of massive talent thing. Uh, this is what it says on the real website site about it. It says, "Are you ready to face off at a pop up bar that is not a demanding or demandoing? <laughs> <laughs> Get ready for a kick ass pop up bar in which we uncover the menu, which is located on the back of the Declaration of Independence <laughs> at the unbarable weight of massive talent. The Nick and Pedro pop up bar running from May 12th to June 24th at 4601 Shawnee Drive, Kansas City, Kansas, every Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. Um, this pop up bar will offer you a unique opportunity to show off your individuality and belief in personal freedom. <laughs> all while drinking. <laughs> <laughs> have cocktails either in Nick Cage's or Papa Pedro's patio. So put the bunny back in the box and make your reservation before the cordyceps totally take control. Is it, and remember, this is the way. Man, uh, is is that next week here? Is this this coming weekend? That starts tomorrow. That God starts damn, tomorrow. We'll be out of town time. most of the time. But no, no, it's it's all the way till June. Okay, I'll, June. I'll fucking be there. Yeah, yeah. it's June twenty fourth, yeah. dude. If I come up for the weird first weekend of June for your birthday, yeah. we're going. There. Okay, okay. I don't care if everybody's gone and we go, or if it's the night before, or whatever. But we are fucking going to that goddamn <laughs> bar. There's no possible. We might not make the Bob's Burgers ones, yeah. and that's fine. Uh, even though I would love to see yeah. that one because I dressed up like Bob's Burgers kids like a couple weeks, a couple uh, two years ago, but. I want to go to see the, <laughs> the, 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 the Nicholas Cage. You know how much I love yeah. Nicholas Cage and, oh, yeah, yeah. and Pedro. They're like the best. So anyway, guys, uh, you can go to, oh man, I just closed everything out because I am that dumb. Uh, don't worry, guys. We're I don't need to be dumb. I, we're 25 minutes in. We haven't even talked a movie yet. Who needs to talk movies? There's like five people watching. They don't care about movies. They're not here for movies. <laughs> Who cares for movies? Uh, let me just get the website up so I can say it real quick. I'm so sorry about this, guys. It's www.vignexbar.com. That's www.v-i-g-n-e-t-t-e-s-b-a-r.com. That's where you find both Nick and Pedro's pop-up, Bob's uh, Bargers, and um, their um, connections to Instagram and Facebook. They will also give you information about tables and how you can reservations there. Definitely do it. Edward's a good dude for us. Has been for years. I talk to the guy sometimes drunkenly in the middle and I, I really do. Mm-hmm. I'm not joking. Seriously. That's a true thing. Yeah. Like literally there's times where I've been drunk and like super, super drunk talking to Edward at like 3 AM in the morning, man. <laughs> like, how you doing? Edward? How you I'm, just bored. I'm, I'm just bored. <laughs> how you doing? I love Edward. He's a good guy. Okay. All right, Chris, let's get to some movies. All right. Uh, let's talk first. A good person directed by Zach Braff. Zach Braff directed, uh, directed such things as Garden State. Yeah, everyone remembers Garden State, right? With Natalie Portman. Yeah. Uh, that's what everyone remembers. He also did. Yeah, anyway. Um, back in 2004, man, that's 20, almost 20 years ago. He did Garden State. You remember that? Um, mm-hmm. This also has, mm-hmm. this stars Florence Pugh as... Allison? You just didn't want your baby sister to tag along whilst you saved the world with the cool kids. You weren't really. Also, this star Celeste O'Connor as Ryan. What are you doing here in Somerville, anyway? Uh, Molly Shannon is Diane of Alice's mother. My feelings would best be expressed in a monologue from the made for TV movie Portrait of a Teenage Centerfold, starring Miss Laurie Singer from Footloose. And uh, this also stars The Amazing, The the ever beautiful and 85 year old man known as Morgan Freeman. You've tried it your way for years, and your students can't even get past a minimum basic skills test. Also, this stars um, Chinaza Uch as Nathan, Zoe Lister Jones as Simone, Michelle Hines, no, Michelle Hines as Molly, 
Toby unaware is Jesse and uh, Ignacio Diaz Severio as Quinn and the Alex Wolf Mark Alex Wolf guys marry him as the son in Hereditary. Um, so Neil, let's go ahead and read the storyline story for this one. Allison, which is my wife's maiden name, oh, Allison. <laughs> <laughs> Literally, that's funny. Anyway. Allison, the protagonist of A Good Person, is a promising young woman with a thriving career, a loving fiancé, and a close-knit circle of family and friends. However, her life takes a sudden turn for the worse when she experiences a harrowing tragedy that leaves her battling an addiction to opiates and grappling with unresolved sorrow. Despite the challenges that lie ahead, she finds solace and strength in an unexpected relationship with her would-be father-in-law who becomes her unlikely ally in the journey towards healing and recovery. All right, man. <laughs> that's, that's the, it's a hard drama. Uh, so, Zach Braff, you guys remember Garden State, he is sort of maligned for creating the archetype of a girlfriend being the main pixie dream girl. And this is his attempt to make really, make sure that he's not the guy <laughs> with that one. Um, I want to see, for, first of all, I want to see right up front that the acting in this, all this is incredible. All the acting is spot on. This movie, the acting in this movie, everybody played their character ridiculously well. Yeah. In fact, I'm going to go and say this. I am pissed this movie does not have more recognition out there. Oh, yeah. Because I feel like this was like a really good story and someone who's had to deal with some traumas that were in this movie yeah. personally. That um, I was a huge fan of this movie. Did you? I was a huge fan of the relationship between Florence and uh, Samuel Jack, uh, not Samuel Jackson. I'm so <laughs> sorry. I was, I was thinking for some reason, I was thinking Nick Fury. Yeah, 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 I don't yeah, know yeah. why. Yeah. Um, but, uh, the, um, probably cause we're about to talk guardians yeah, of the galaxy. That's that's probably yeah, yeah. Um, anyway, uh, but the relationship between Florence and Morgan Freeman was ridiculously awesome. Mm. Um, literally the, the relationship of how this all goes. I mean, there's some parts like, I really wish they would, uh, give me more information or maybe a visual, of exactly what happened during that year in you know during uh you know we we get told what happens well i think i think part of that is it's the, it's the unraveling of the story and unre- revealing part so yeah yeah so you sort of you maybe have an idea how it goes and it doesn't go that way you know which is yeah. which i thought was fine I, the movie itself was it was it was really well acted really well done um and it had parts that but I guess people who know people who've been addicted uh, can relate to or know, you know, experience yeah. before. Um, I I don't have a problem. With, I I like the movie itself. It was a little too long for my for my uh, for me. Two hours nine minutes. But what? yeah, I thought it was a little, just a little bit too. That, long. that was a little long for you. Uh, th- this movie itself. I mean, yeah. But but wait a minute. So you're telling me <laughs> a film. That contains Morgan Freeman. <laughs> it's too long view. for you. No, I'm the, uh, what, the, what? Who are you? Where, for the what story, you it was Chris? for the Where's story. Chris at? Can you go get Chris for me? For the Can you story, go out the curtain, come back and bring Chris. For the story, he was telling, but I like this movie. It's only two hours. Two hours nine minutes, dude. We watch like five hour movies now. Like it's <laughs> impossible to not find a long movie now. You're right about that. Everything is like yeah. everything and, is. A, it's only two hours, and to be honest, I like the journey it took me on. It took me. In, Maybe it could lose. I guess there's a part of it it could lose. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I, I'm not going to say what it is because it'd be a spoiler. And we're not doing spoilers to the end of the movie, which I might talk about it then. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, uh, but we don't do the spoiler to the end of the, this uh, uh, this episode. Yeah, we can do um, a full but, episode before we <laughs> go into spoilers. Yeah, before we get to the spoiler part. But uh, literally, I was a huge fan of this movie. I, I'm like, I would, Chris, I'm not lying to you, bro. This might be in my top five at the end of the year. I guess this is that, like, I see. Uh, this is like one of them that hit me like right in the heart. And I was watching it right in this spot, okay. right where I'm sitting. I was watching it right here. Like I'm looking at you on this screen 
And usually if I'm doing something like that, it's because I'm working on something and I'm trying just to do it, to do it, you know? And it caught my attention so much. I just stopped working on everything I was doing. And I was just so involved in it. I was just so like there with them. Did you cry? Oh yeah. Like fucking three times. I, I, I did. I did a little bit easily. Of, I did a little bit of, you know, like where you like, like you're like, like you're trying to catch your breath, but, um, Maybe I'm, maybe I'm a little bit softer on it because because I, I spent twenty bucks to watch this on Amazon. So um, no, maybe you're a little harsher on it than I am. Yeah, yeah, I yeah. just I just turned it on. Yeah, yeah, that's what you did. <laughs> I did not. I I gave my pan I'm like each time. Like, In fact, here I'll turn it on right now. There we go. There it is, and it's on. No, I own it now. I own it now. But, <laughs> like yeah, but um, a good person. Uh, it's Florence Pugh is great, and she's a star. Like like she's gonna be one of those people that. In ten years, you'll know who she is, uh, and who? everything. Celeste, yeah, the Florence Pugh. Oh, for, you already know who she is. I know. I'm saying, how like, do you not know who she is? I, 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 I've like, asked my dad what who kind Florence, of human being no, doesn't know. If, I mean, I've never asked who Florence Pugh is. He wouldn't know. <laughs> That's what I mean, I'm saying. At this point, at, at this point, who doesn't know Hawkeye? Who doesn't know Black Widow? Who doesn't know Midsummer? Who doesn't know Old Fighting people. with My Family? You literally got five nerdyisms just with those four movies. Yeah, I know. I know. I know. Pro what wrestling. She is. You got. You got pro wrestling. You got comic book geeks. You got. I mean, boss well, bitch fight challenge. That was a good let video. Me ask, I let, saw me, that. let me ask you a question. Then. So, mm -hmm. uh, you know, like the last a really big movie superstar, I think, like that's still around, is Tom Cruise. But like in the last fifteen years, who became a giant superstar in the way that Tom Cruise was? You know, like Ryan was, Reynolds. Uh, yeah, fuck it. Ryan I, Reynolds before that was just a throwaway cutesy boy. Uh, Chris, uh, Chris Evans. I'll go Chris Evans too. But um, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I just don't think that's all. Because where's Freddie Prince Jr.? <laughs> what happened to him? Yeah, where's Jason Vanderbeek? James and Vanderbeek. I don't know where he's at. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. That's what I'm saying. Josh Hartnett, those, yeah. they, they were in that group of guys. Josh Hartnett. And yeah. those two are ones that shot up to the moon. Yeah, that's true. Okay. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you, can't, you can't say that. Don't. Are you trying to argue if there's still real movie stars? No, around? come on. Chris. I, I'm, 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 a, I'm being a Quentin Tarantino asshole guy. Because <laughs> you cause, are. Yeah, because you I'm, are. I'll fucking throw names out all day. Here, give me five more seconds. I can come up. Okay, with I'm, good, I'm good. Scarlett I'm, Johansson. Scarlett Johansson's yeah. one. Like, but, but, I mean, but, she, no, but listen, you listen, you, but, but again, these people, uh, all the people you mentioned were uh, comic books movies, right? Like Deadpool. Um, you mentioned Ryan Reynolds. You mentioned Chris Evans as Captain America. You mentioned oh, you, Scarlett Johansson's Black Widow. And I'm not and saying that's a problem. Those are just action movies. Those yeah. are just action movies those are super, that people they, gave a fancy name but, to. But they are super movies, right? Yeah, yeah. But just because they're superhero movies, so they're still not, action. Yeah, they're still action movies. movies. Yeah, they, they are. Just like Predator came from somewhere. James Bond came from books. Yeah, yeah. Freaking. I'm not know, saying like, that's a problem either. Yeah. I'm not saying it's I'm a problem. I'm just saying I don't think it's a problem at all. Okay. But I think, <laughs> I don't know even know why we're talking about this. <laughs> all right. Good voice. A uh, good person. Not good voice. Uh, uh, but, but Florence Pugh is freaking amazing. Morgan Freeman. I mean, Florence has been good in pretty much every damn thing she's right. done so far. Yeah, I know. So it was Mr. Jones in this, and you don't. She's great too. Oh, so Zoe Esther Jones, uh, and, and Molly Shannon too. Oh yeah, uh, Zoe Esther Jones was great in this as a counterpart. Um, there was another performance. Somebody popped up that I was just like, oh, it sucks that he played that part, but I'm glad that you he wanted got a bigger part for that guy. Uh, it's either Oli Green or Alex Wolf that plays the a hole with the tattoo. Alex face. Wolf. Oh no, that's oh, no, 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 that's no, no, no. It's a uh, Diaz Silvera. Yeah, uh, Silvero. Yeah. Yeah, he 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 played a good part. Uh, a, it's a bad part in the movie, but <laughs> he played a good part, and hopefully, we see a lot more of him coming up. Uh, let's get some quotes and let's move on. All right, cool. Because we have a big, huge news segment, and we have a a giant a segment do, about the, about the Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, you three, the big one. Yeah, we got we got a huge in. Yeah. It's gonna be big. It's gonna be bigger than your. Mm -hmm. Anyway, many hours I spent blissfully lost in a world of my own creation. I love that line. It was a great line. I never have to see the day again. I never want to see or have to see the day again. When we get married, we have to make rules about the phone in bed. Chris, do you have the phone? Do you do you ever play with your phone in bed? Uh, Leah does. So Leah does. Oh, I could be a professional dancer. 
I just laughed at that because I was like, when people say that, usually that means a different kind of answer. Anyway, <laughs> um, what are these dresses? We are seeing, I, I couldn't even sleep last night thinking about that. Uh, it's makeover Monday. Uh, it's Friday. <laughs> <laughs> he used to flirt with me with his fingers deep in my mouth. So he owes me one. <laughs> Are you a dyke? Only when I fuck your mother. <laughs> uh, goddamn, mo no. Goddamn, no foreplay or anything. <laughs> It's heroin in a pretty little dress. Let's talk about Oxycontin, people. That's truth. Just want you to know that. Throw that out there. If you're addicted to Oxycontin, please get some help. Anyway, if I catch you near my granddaughter again, I will rip your fucking dick off and shove it down your throat. Yeah. He's a fuck boy. That's what they call him on the online. Fuck boys. <laughs> Bunch of fuck boys. <laughs> Am I the reason you're back here? You're trying to solve a problem by looking in the other direction. I don't know how to do this. Do what? Start all over again. I never want to talk to you about sex again. Really? Because I love this shit. <laughs> Daniel, this is God. Allison would like you to change the conversation now. Do you think that was a reference to... Uh, to uh, Bruce Almighty. Every time Morgan Freeman has played God and everything he's ever done, yes. Okay. <laughs> I think he's played God like four times, dude. Uh, a comparison is a thief of joy. I think we are victims of a teenage girl's good attentions. Tell me why I shouldn't kill you, motherfucker. You didn't have time to stop because you looked at your fucking phone. Amar Viante is Latin for it means to love one's fate. Oh, love that line. I love that because I, I studied Latin, so I knew that as soon as she said it. I was like, oh, it's so great. I can't believe he said that. Okay, my score on this is a 3.8. I liked it. Cool. 4.2. Easily. I loved it. I loved it. Uh, this is one of those hard droppers that, like, right now, if I went to go visit my mom, you I'd be like, watch hey, with mom, you? yeah, I got a movie to watch with you. Okay. Like, I have movies to watch with you. And we would watch those movies, and then we'd be happy, and then she would not disown me like she did that one time. W would you make her watch Antichrist or something? What's that? <laughs> she make her watch Antichrist or something? <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I made her watch Batman, uh, Dark Knight. Oh. Um, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, you know, one shitty movie after another. Come on. Uh, yeah. Chris Nolan, nice. sometime he'll make a good movie. Uh, yeah, I mean, hopefully Joe Oppenheimer is great. I'm going to really look forward to Oppenheimer. All right, man, I'm on uh, RunTomatoes.com. What is the audience score for a good person? Mm. That's a good question, Chris. I am going to say, by the audience, it's going to be 64%. 96%. Holy shit! No way! There's an audience, I totally was off on that one. There's an audience says, audience says, with a profound story and some really great performances, a good person is a tear-jerking drama with tons of heart. Right? Now, what is a, a critic score for a good person? Uh... Well, if they did 96, it has to be 83 at least. Is that what you're saying, 83? Yep. 57%. What is it? 57. What is their bullshit reason for that? Criticism is busy, baggy, and schmaltzy. Good person members that the best of intentions and terrific performances it can sometimes add to a movie that's merely fine. So that's what they said about it. Mm, I think that's bullshit. I didn't, think it, I didn't think it was busy or baggy. I mean, a little baggy and a little schmaltzy, but I thought it was better than... 57% for sure. Yeah, I definitely think it's it's 10 times better than that. 10 times better? You mean 557%? <laughs> yeah, um, I think it's 500%. That guy is, uh, 
What a what a bull bull heart. I'll kill that mofo. I'll find him. <laughs> so uh, yeah, man. Uh, what, what do you want? What, what, we got news right here. You pull that up or do I need? I don't know what you're ta- we're talking about. News? We're doing news. Yeah. This is the movies don't suck and some them news. I'm gonna read Chris some stuff. He's gonna act like he hasn't read it three different times while he was sitting on the toilet today. I was sitting on the toilet the whole time today. A lot, a lot. You told me you were a lot. You're that window was way too hot, man. I think I had like last night, but um, yeah. All right. So let's see here. Let's. I start with one. a blank face. You... What? You was just a thumb in the in the frame when you see me. Well, I don't know what you're talking about, sir. All right. Uh, anyway. I don't know who said this. Somebody said this when I mentioned this what the last week, and I don't know if it was you. Mm-hmm. I don't know if it was someone else I talked to. I don't know if it was one of my buddies or friends that, you know, I run into all the time. Mm-hmm. But I'm going to say this. We got some casting going on over at the Tim Burton house because we got a release date. Beetlejuice 2 will be coming to the theaters. As of 2024. What do you have like a date, like a movie? Like a, it like, just says 2024 right now. Okay, so until next year sometime. So here's the first news Jenna Ortega, mm-hmm. aka Wednesday, will be in the new Beetlejuice movie. That makes sense. <laughs> it really does. Makes a lot of sense. Makes a lot of sense. All right, you ready? Uh huh. Monica Belluca. Bellucci. Bellucci. That's what I meant. Bellucci. Uh, who's known, known for Deadpool. Deadpool. And Irreversible. I think she's known for some other stuff. Yes, but that's really irreversible, yeah. And Irreversible, yeah. Uh, she's going to be in Beetlejuice 2. Cool. And all 100% signed on for returning... Is one of course the one, the man, the, the legend himself, Michael Keaton. I know he's been like Catherine. Waiting. I know he's been waiting forever to get like on the back on this. So good for him. Yeah, Catherine O'Hara, mm-hmm. and the one, the only, Winona Ryder will all be returning. Um, J- Justin Thorax as well is also starring. Thoreau. What else am I missing? Thoreau. Justin Thoreau. Thoreau. That's what I said. Uh, they are all going to be returning. So let's move on to something that I will make Chris happy in the goat dots. Okay. Mortal Kombat 2 has casted Johnny Cage. And the wrestling world is completely pissed because it's not The Miz. So who, who they cast as Johnny Cage? Man, some fucking washed up dude named uh, Carl Urban. Oh, <laughs> that, that's a great choice for Johnny Cage, honestly. He doesn't that know is a Urban. great choice. Carl Urban, if you don't know, guys, is uh, he played uh, Judge Dredd in the Dredd movies, but he ought in the Dredd movie, I should yeah. say, uh, which is, but that's not the only comic book thing he's ever done. Yeah. He's also done, he is the leader of The Boys on Amazon yeah. Prime. He's. Um, gosh dang it, what's his name? Yeah, I, 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 I can't think of his I name right on now. Too, dude. I blinked on too. We're gonna have to figure this out before. We... Uh, yeah, look him up. Look him up real, okay, real quick. Okay. Look him up real quick because right. I got Keep I got going. too much stuff on my Keep screen going. as it is. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, it's Billy Butcher. But, Billy Butcher. It was Billy Butcher in the boys. Uh, the most bad character. Well, yeah, Billy Butcher. Okay, and just for you, Chris, just mm-hmm. so you know this, okay. Um, the. New Mortal Kombat game will yeah. not be Mortal Kombat 12. What's it going to be? It'll be called Mortal Kombat because they are totally rebooting the entire game series. Uh, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> <laughs> I always love it when you make that noise because then I know you're really appreciative. I don't know, like, like, like. I guess they could remake it. Like they remade, they mean you can remake it all these games right now. So I guess they could remake it. Whatever. Okay. 
You, you're gonna love it. You know you're gonna love it. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. <laughs> Keep uh-huh. going. I, I don't want to know if, if I ever want to go again, dude. Oh, you guys, he's in the stalling because he's trying to pull up stuff that you brought up earlier. I'm trying to bring up everything as fast as yeah. as possible. Hey, Fast X is uh, going to mark some money on that Paul Walker, Gerson. Yep, that's right. Paul Walker's daughter, Metal Walker, Thornton Allen, will be acting in the new Fast that, That's a week after next, man. We, we got to yeah, see Fast X. Hey. You're tired of him, aren't you? Uh, no, man. I mean, uh, whatever. The preview makes it super ridiculous, so I can't wait. I feel like I've been watching him since I was damn near 18, dude, (laughs) or 16 years old. I don't know how old I was, but. I was, a. I remember when we came out, I was in high school at the first one, and everyone was dying to see it, and I had no, no fucking desire. And here we are. (laughs) You know what here we are, too? We gotta get a sequel. We got a sequel. 2003's. Freaky Friday sequel. Is Lindsay Lohan and Jimmy Lee Curtis going to be in this one? Both signed on because remember they were talking about it during the Halloween mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. She's like, I'd really love to do, you know, old grandma and like mother or daughter or granddaughter. Um, so, yes, there is a there is a Freaky Friday sequel officially in the works with Jamie Lee Curtis and Lindsay Lohan. The best luck to both of them. Hopefully, Lindsay doesn't snort up all her profits. Uh, anyway. I, hope, I hope Lindsay. I think I feel like she's probably spent a lot of time at home recently. <laughs> I just like it for her. Johnny Depp announces his cast for his new Maudi biopic. Mm. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all I feel about that. <laughs> Amadi, which will star filming in Budapest this fall, is set to captivate a biopic about the Italian artist Amedio Malingro. Um, now, the cast so far is Italian superstar Ricardo Sabramachi. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, Pierre Nini. Okay. Okay. <laughs> And Al Pacino. Okay. Al Pacino. <laughs> there it is. There it Pow! is. Pow! Yeah. Wow. <laughs> we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, Will Poulter. Um, oh, yeah. Will Poulter. If you don't know, he, Guardians of the Galaxy. we're going to talk about him in a little bit. He's Adam Warlock in the new Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Uh, would like everybody to stop calling him Sid from Toy Story. He, <laughs> he does look Sid. like him. <laughs> Please stop calling it. He knows he looks like him. A guy in a urinal in L.A. last week turned to me and said, you're in Toy Story, right? And I was like, well, that was animated. I don't want to be rude. <laughs> I also appreciate that the, the, a meme going around of me, I dressed up as Sid for from Toy Story for anti-bullying week. So arguably, I haven't helped my case at <laughs> all. But Toy Story came out in 95. I was two. <laughs> and they were doing it through live action. Um. Hey, have you ever seen that movie, that horror movie, Teeth? Yes, I've seen Teeth. <laughs> Where, where's that? Where's those teeth at? They're in the, a woman's vagina. Yeah. Teeth has now joined the ranks of horror movies turned musical. Oh, wow. I'll see that. <laughs> I'll see that. <laughs> I'll see that for sure. Um, Teeth, based on the cult classic of the same name, is a fierce raptors and savage entertaining new musical crackling with irresponsible desire and ancient rage. A dark comedy conjuring the legend of one girl whose sexual course is always her salvation. Michael R. Jackson, the Pulsar, and Tony winning playwright is behind, also who's behind Strange Loop is collaborating with Anna K. Jacobs, who previous critics, uh, club critics are pop, are writing the musical. I watch that. Sure. Yeah, right. Dude. Yeah, I like Tito. It's, good it's like it's so weird though. It's so weird. I like Tito. Oh, hey. Um Pedro's not done. He's still doing stuff. Pedro Pascal did star in an horror epic from barbarian filmmaker oh, what? uh Zach Krager. Um it's gonna be he's also appearing in Ridley Scott's um Glad you're too. It's Zach Krager's Weapons is the name of the movie. I should mention it's that first. And he's also in Ridley Scott's Gladiator sequel. It's coming out. It's Pedro Pascal, man. At this point, what's the name of the movie? I think he's, what's the name of the movie again? Huh? What's the name of the movie that's coming out again? With Weapons. Weapons? Okay. I'm super excited for it. 
already. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's it's Pedro. I mean, I hear Pedro. I hear Pedro. I hear director. I hear Pedro. I'm like, fuck yeah. I don't see that movie. Uh, Aaron Eckhart, Tim Roth, and Abigail Preslin Rats filming for um, a movie called Classified. Uh, Classified is an action pack film held by Dutch director uh, Roel Rain, who previously worked on his big credit projects like uh, Netsfield's Fistful of Vengeance and Paramount's Halo. Mm -hmm. Um, the movie is about, which is currently a in the canon. So da, 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 da. Oh, the feature previously wrote, no, no, it does not tell me what the premise of the film is. An international <laughs> espionage plot line interwoven with an emotional father daughter relationship sub story. Cool. Okay. Sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> um, director Jeff Rowe would like to tell you where he got his ideas for the script for the new Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle Mutant Mayhem animated film. Are we seeing that? Yes, we are. Okay, okay, thank you. Especially after I mention what his ideas came from. Yes, I want to hear. His He's inspired by the movies Stand By Me. Fuck. <laughs> and Lady Bird. Interesting. Okay, yeah, we're definitely going to see that. <laughs> his quote was... We wanted to be Stand By Me and Lady Bird, but, you know, with ninjas, turtles. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, you grew up with the turtles, so did I. And this is just a... Yeah, I, I really grew up with the turtles. You kind of did. No, are you kidding me? I, I had the Ninja Turtles in my fifth birthday party. I'm sure you did. Yeah, your fifth? I was, like, 11, dude. <laughs> we grew up with them. You say you grew up on them. I did. Again, I did fucking not. did, dude. I was a Ninja Turtle fan. You say you did, but you didn't. I so did. James Gunn was praised by PETA for deceptions of animal testing cruelty in Guardians of the Galaxy 3. He, he was... He's what? I don't know. I, mean, I don't really feel like... I mean, yeah, yeah there was a... I, I did hear people say, like, trigger warning, you know, like, like before yelling in, you know? Yeah. We'll, we'll talk more about I, that I in, in, during the movie. Stephen King's The Monkey Adaptation finds its lead in The White Lotus. James Wan is set to produce and the latest abduct adaptation of Stephen King's classic novel, The Monkey. Um, James Wan, behind the creator of the sagas like Saw, ended mm -hmm. with The Conjuring, mm -hmm. and The White Lotus uh, is going to be doing that movie. Um, heck yeah. I like James Wan. Heck yeah. Yeah, watch that. Yeah. I, I mean, Stephen King I mean, adaptation is The Monkey James is a great book. <laughs> yeah, the monkey is a great book. So I mean, like literally. Um, all right, let's see. Lou Diamond Phillips says Young Guns Three is still in works. I don't know how that is. <laughs> um, even that, I mean, how can they be young guns at this time? Aren't they old men with guns? Yeah, yeah, it should, um, it'd be like like rusty guns or something like that, right? <laughs> um, let's see here. There is. Um, Evil Dead Rise is the highest of the series. It's at $120 million at the box office. Uh, wrestling legend, or soon-to-be legend and Hall of Famer someday, uh, Cody Rhodes has been fighting for a Star Trek scenario for, for a scene. He goes, I can tell my agent in L.A. there's only one thing that's kind of alerts on notifications is when it comes to Trek. I'll take anything. They can put me in a whole Gorn outfit where you don't even know it's me. I'll take <laughs> it. You can put me in the engine room. I'll take it. I can literally just do something with my face, some sort of recognition on the bridge. Ensign, I don't care. Whatever. I will take it. So <laughs> someone, please, the American Nightmare Cody Rhodes, uh, soon to be WWE champion, really wants to be in... Um, Star Trek movie. In a movie. Yeah, yeah your mom's movie. <laughs> hey! Your favorite uh, horror movie is about to start again. Uh, the new Blair Witch Project. Hey, come on, did you is, my favorite? Uh, reportedly in works. So, uh, yeah, I don't want to talk more about that. Yeah, I mean, All right. No, real quick, real quick. You don't like the, you saw the first one, Mushrooms, right? What? You saw the first one when we were doing Mushrooms, right? Yes, yes, I, I I did that on that was many 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 years ago. Teenage get kids doing drugs, going to movies. Yeah. And what was that like for you? Seeing where we tried to mushrooms. I freaked out a lot. I was not there, guys. Just saying, this was long before I met Neil. 
Just so you guys know. Oh, no, no. Yeah, this is, I was a way teenager in Indiana. Yeah. Um, Mark Marin has joined Lou, uh, yes. Jude Law and Nicholas Holt in The Order. Um, so now that has more people in it that we want to see. Can't fucking wait, dude. <laughs> yeah, so that movie's uh, all about everything we want to touch ourselves in an ungodly mm-hmm. way like. Mm-hmm. Very unholy. Bill Skarsgård is <sighs> going to be playing Nicolas Cage's son in the Lord of War sequel. Yeah, I I actually did see this. I'm a big fan of Lord of War. Uh, I've seen that movie like eight, nine, eight or nine times just because. Right. And it's great. It's a, It's got... It's got Jared Leto before he is what he is now, which is some weird cult leader. <laughs> now he's just an actor, <laughs> and um, and uh, it's good to see. Uh, Lord, Lord of War is great, and I guess they call this one the Lords of War, right? They gotta do that. Yeah, like, like, alien, like aliens. I didn't know Lord of War was such post so popular to get a sequel, but I'm happy to hear that. You know? Yeah. I know exactly what you're talking about. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> he was like moving, moving on. on. James Gunn wants to put Chris Bratt in his new beloved DC hero Superman legacy. Hi, Superman. He wants him to be Crypto the Dog. Okay. Superman's pet dog. He goes, I was hoping I could cast him as Crypto the Super Dog. You know, he could just do motion capture as and set on walk around on his hands and knees, but he can't talk. I don't know about that, dude. I can't. Yeah. Yeah. Uh. Guy Ritchie's next action movie will star Henry Cavell, Jake Gyllenhaal, and Eze Gonzalez. Because mm. we didn't see The Covenant. <laughs> we should have. It doesn't have a title right now. Okay. Um, but it's Guy Ritchie with Evan Atkinson and John Ferdberg of Black Bear International. Um, so, I mean. Queens, dude. Queens. Yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't give us anything. But, I mean. Guy Ritchie, Henry Cavill, Jake Gyllenhaal. You got me there. You don't even have to go anymore. Mark Hamill and Tom Hattleston is to star in Stephen King's new movie, The Life of Chuck, directed by The Haunting of the Hills' Mike Flanagan. I feel like Mark Hamill's just showing more stuff than he used to, like because uh, he was he's going to be in that movie, uh, The Machine, coming out in May, which we're very excited the about. The Machine. Yeah, and he's, gonna, he's just showing Well, because now he's at Mark Hamill level. He's at legendary level. But he was at legendary level before that, I think. Don't you well, think? he only did Luke Skywalker before. Okay, but, and but then he came he back did the and he did Star Wars. Okay. He did the other Star Wars movies, and now he's like, you know, at the super. Sorry, my pants were falling down. <laughs> um, but now he's at legendary level, you know, where I where, don't know where he can still uh, pull the audience. So they're like, yeah, more Campbell was one in, in yeah. this one. Okay, all right. Last but not least is an is an actual Star Wars report. Star Wars the Ray sequel details revealed by Kathleen Kennedy. They are exploring is the evolution of the Jedi. There are going to be 15 years after the rise of Skywalker. Mm-hmm. The First Order has fallen. The Jedi are in chaos. And there's even a question of how many even exist anymore. And Rey's building the new Jedi Order based on the text that she was given and that Luke imparted on her. Yeah, we'll watch it. I mean, like Star Wars. We're going to fucking watch those movies. Yeah, it's Star Wars. Um, yeah, we're going to watch Star Wars. Are you going to watch Star Wars? Yeah, I'm going to watch fucking Star Wars. I mean, who's not going to watch fucking Star Wars? I mean, what person puts Star Wars on? If you don't watch Star Wars because it says Star Wars, it's because you're one of those guys. Yeah, yeah, I know yeah, what yeah, We yeah. all know what those guys are. Yeah, they're, they're fun haters. That's what they are. Yeah, like, <laughs> I, don't, I don't like yeah, Star Wars. Yeah, nerds. Nerds. <laughs> nerds like Star Wars. <laughs> He's right. We but do that's like- it, Chris. Let's get to this because I know it's going to be an hour. So let's do it. That was the movies that don't suck and something new. Now me and Chris are going to talk the biggest comic book movie of the year. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3. Okay. Uh, you guys don't know who James Gunn is. He directed this. I don't know how you would go your life without knowing James Gunn, but James directed Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Volume 2 is also known for trauma films. Uh is super he did super i fucking love super don't you love super um and he uh is now the leader of the dc universe this is probably his last film he's ever gonna do for marvel for the foreseeable future this stars chris pat pratt as uh peter quill slash star ward 
Star Wars. Drop it. Uh, hey. I got a city collar. Drop it now. Hey, cool man. No problem. No. Also, Bradley Cooper as Rocket Raccoon or Rocket. Sandarians. What a bunch of losers. Also, uh, Dave Bautista as Drax. You dare. You know who I am, yes? Also, Palm Clementif as Mantis. I am Mantis. Vin Diesel as Groot. I am Groot. Also, is Sean Gunn as Craglin? Thanks. Captain. Also, uh, I want to mention Karen, Kill- Karen Gillian as Nebula. Thanks, Dad. Sounds fair. Also, Zoe Saldana is Kamora. It will be your doom. And finally, we got Chidwuki Ijui as the High Evolutionary. Every time I turn around, one of you is doing something fucked up! So let's start as Maria Bakova as Cosmo. Uh, Sarah Almami as Soul Army. That's what this bunch of is. Will Poulter, who we talked about, as Adam Warlock. And uh, we also got, and that's... Um, yeah, uh, that's a lot of people in this movie. Why don't you go ahead and read the storyline for this one? Still reeling from the loss of Gamora, Peter Quill rallies his team to defend the universe and one of their own. A mission that could mean the end of the Guardians, if not successful. This is the best of the Guardians of the Galaxy movies. <laughs> uh, and if you guys don't know, I fucking love Guardians of the Galaxy. Fucking love yeah. I've watched both the movies. Uh, I think I've watched them both days yeah. this week. Like I was in it that when I was in the office, I literally just had them on the yeah. second monitor yeah. playing. There uh, now, like Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one that has that thing where you know it starts it, you know, and, but uh, like it's way better than two. In my opinion, Volume Three is an incredible movie. I love Volume Three. Cried like four times <laughs> during this movie. Yeah, like, okay, so this movie is, you know, they're dealing with what happened in Endgame, mm-hmm. um, which, yeah, guys, that's only a couple of years from away. That, yeah, like, this is this is the best Marvel movie since Endgame, right? Yeah, I, I mean, I don't know, dude. Uh, you know, that's just, I mean, what are the other movies? <laughs> you, you got to list them for me. Fine. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's see. Marvel movie order. All right, here we go. We're going to get them all right now. Okay. We'll and start, we're gonna, we're gonna we'll start with we'll start with the game. With that. All, right. all right. So, we're in phase 5. All right. <laughs> in game In game was in phase 3? Yeah. So, we had we came out since then is uh uh Spider-Man Far From Home, which is great. We like Spider-Man. So, Far From you're Home. saying this is better than Spider-Man Far From Home. Yes. You're saying this is better than Doctor Strange. Yes. This is better than Loki. This uh-huh. is better than... Um, Eternals. I don't know, man. Far From Home is really good. <sighs> Far good. From Home with all the Spider-Man in it. Okay, oh, Spider-Man, it's... No Way Home. No Way Home. No Way Home. I'm sorry. Uh, it's better than Shang-Chi. It's better than Eternals. better than Doctor Strange. And the Multiverse. Way better than Thor. Way better than Ant-Man. And way better than... um uh, the new, What was the Ant-Man and the Wasp? Yeah, and um, it's just it's just the it's the best. Hey, one man, the Wasp seen. was really good. Werewolf by Night was good. <laughs> oh man, this is better than Guardians. I don't know, dude. This is, this I is mean, better than the best movie since the game, in my opinion. And I think you agree with me. I think I think you're one percent agree with me. I think you're just fucking with me because we both love this movie. <laughs> no, I'm not fucking with you. I mean, uh, Spider Man, uh, Spider Man, uh, No Way Home, man. Is literally one of the best comic book movies of all time. Like, and, this is and neck and neck with opinion, it. This is neck still, and neck with it. So, in my opinion, no, it's not. It's right. not. It's right. a good movie, but it's not neck and neck. Did you cry four times? I can explain in the, in the, why, if you want me to. No. Did you cry four times during the tournament? I did. I did. I did have some. I had some moments. Did you cry during this movie? Because I cried like four times during this movie. I had some moments, but um So this is definitely um, the most um most emotional Guardians movie, right? Like like no doubt. Most emotional Yeah, I mean this is the one that finally gets you. I mean, I don't know. 
Because, like, uh, the first uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2, I was very emotional. Yeah, this one's more emotional than that, though. I, I didn't cry, like, four times like a fucking baby. <laughs> I did when when they only showed David Hasselhoff for half a second <laughs> in the Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. You're telling me it was possible. I think in volume two, David I think uh, volume two is the only time it cries when they did that tribute to Onyx. Oh gosh, on But anyway, <laughs> all right, let's talk about the movie at hand, though. Okay. Um, this is literally them all dealing with um all the turmoils in their own life. Yeah. Every guardian gets is like she's going on. Said this, yeah. Someone said this, and I thought this was a great. Uh, way to explain it. Every single per- the first movie was all them hiding, is showing you how they mask their tragedies. Mm-hmm. Uh, Quill does it by music. Uh, Rocket does it by you know building things. Um, then you got you know, you know, it, it, like it Drax does it by ignoring. You know, like each one of them has their own thing. Then Volume Two is how they all deal with it as a group on how they're still covering all their major tragedies, (laughs) but how as they come together as a group. So when you first see Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1, you see at the beginning, you see Star-Lord dancing when the the headlines come up, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then at the Volume 2, you see them all working as a unit together, working when the the Volume 2 thing, when the, the... pop line pops up Mm. guardians of the galaxy and this one it's the guardians of the galaxy hold repeating peter quill as he's intoxicated like carrying him as hey we're still together and we're gonna deal with some shit in this movie is what it's very the thing is is that by this time all of us including the audience are very invested in the group of the guardians themselves we all love everyone we love Peter Wishar, we love Rocket, we love Mantis, we love Drax, we love, even love Nebula, who was kind of like a shithead for the first time, you know? Uh, and yeah. Groot, of course, he doesn't love Groot. And it's just, seeing this was like getting together with some old friends and then seeing them, and then you're 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 there. They get you right thing because uh, it's something that James Good is great at, and especially since he started doing like bigger movies, is giving that heart. Um, and yeah. both you and I are big, big fans of heart, you know, and with these characters that are so silly on the, on the surface, but mean a lot to you and I, cause they, they're, they're the fucking guardians of the galaxy. They, they brought us so much joy to so many people and to you yeah, and I, and, and so to see them in these, to see, you know, at the beginning, how they're kind of fucked up and then see them come together as a group again, it was, it was so good to see them again. So good. And when the tra- you know tragedies happen during this or things that are awful happen, you feel it more than you would, I guess, if it's for the first movie. Because again, we have such a deep attachment to these characters. Um, right. And acting at all, it's fantastic. Like, like and, and people can say, you know, uh, super superhero movies or action movies don't have like great acting, but I thought everyone was perfect for this. Even, even yeah. and especially Dave Bautista, he he uh, he said something kind of silly about how he's not going to do Guardians because he wants to do more serious movies. This is a serious role as Drax. As silly as Drax is, that is a great role, you know. And I think. Well, I mean, I'm guessing after a knock at the cabin, he's ready to do some more. Do he knocking at cabin? You and I talked about how how Dave Bautista, he's a a wrestler turned actor. But he's that turned actor, not turned action star. Yeah, exactly. Not he's turned, an actor. Not turned, he's a wrestler you know. turned actor. He's not. He's not the Rock. He's not John Cena. With while they're great, they're action I'm stars. I'm gonna go dance like John yeah. Cena. Yeah. I'm gonna get down like but John Dave Cena. But Dave Bautista, I think, has a great acting career ahead of him. Well, like the Rock is the action star. And John, Johnny Cena can maybe is more of an action star. Dave Bautista can do whatever he wants to because he's a fantastic actor. Uh, right. We all, we all love Chris so, Pratt. We all love Bradley Cooper. We all love Palm. We all love Karen Gillian, Vin Diesel. Yeah, um, and we all love uh, Zoe Saldana. And Will Poulter was great in this, but this movie was fantastic. Never was I bored. Never was I not into it. Hundred percent. And that, that, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm hijacking the conversation. Neil, please talk. It's okay. I'll, I'll just wait till you breathe. I was waiting for you to breathe. <laughs> you didn't breathe. I think the whole time you just said all that. <laughs> all right. 
Um, I was trying to jump in on several of your points. Sorry, man. I can't even remember what they are now because you just you no. just went full tangent on that, bro. Okay, I know. I just love this movie so much. So I want you to talk. Right. This is a really good movie. All right, so one, we get some setup from the holiday special. Yeah. If you didn't see the holiday special, don't worry. It'll, it kind of covers all that stuff a little bit. But go back, uh, go back and watch it again. See it. Referral. Yeah, yeah, it's literally just like forty minutes. It's good. Disney Plus. It's really, it's really fun. Um, even though uh, Disney Plus lost like over three point six million uh dis- subscribers in the, like the last what happened two weeks. Yeah, uh, I, Mondo's over. Okay. <laughs> All right. Mandalorian's yeah, over. Yeah, okay. I don't know. <laughs> they got nothing else coming out. Yeah. You know? <laughs> um, but this movie was so cool. Mm-hmm. They really tell you the backstory of Rocket Raccoon, or Rocket, yeah. if you want to say that. Um, they give you this great story about how um, Peter, I mean, because we all thought, you know, because of Endgame, I think we all kind of thought, hey, there's Gamora again. She's just going to hook back up with with Peter Quill and that's not what happened here. And it's him dealing with an actual death and at the same time gets to see the person that she uh <laughs> that's supposed to be dead. Yeah. But I thought that was really interesting. You know, well, you, they didn't Disney fight like you expected yeah. them would to. They made Gamora basically Gamora at the end of Endgame. They didn't say like, okay, she came back and now they're in love again. No. This was Chris Pratt dealing with that and are pretty cool dealing with that. And I really appreciated they didn't themselves are sort of say it's all okay. They're back and good now. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, and I'm glad they didn't do that. I'm glad they didn't go the way of like, you know, oh, it's cool. They saw each other. They're here. Da 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 da. And there's something on my floor right here. Yeah, yeah, I didn't go, know what that go, was. Okay. And then I, I looked over, it's my dog it's one of my dog's pole toys. Okay. <laughs> so, like anyway here i'll just hide it there we go anyway uh so <laughs> like um but this movie had heart and soul the only downfall i think of this movie okay and, and this is it this is and this is just me being picky as fuck <laughs> um is i i never got a drax backstory Oh, you want a Drax backstory? Hey, backstory. I want to like, get that. I, I get it, and I get it, and I get why. Yeah, they don't do it. Do you know why they didn't do it? What? Because time constraints and what, what? Let me show you a picture. Okay. See this picture? Yeah, do you see the picture? See the difference? What they look like? Yeah, they look different for sure. Yeah. 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 So in the comics, Drax is nothing like Drax. Oh, yeah? So in the comics, he's actually made by, like, the world or a group of scientists called the Enclave, which we'll talk about them here in a little bit, um, that uh, created him, and he only had one goal. And you know what his goal was? To destroy to kill Thanos. Yeah. Well, Thanos to destroy now. Thanos. That was his only goal. That's in his brain. If he kills Thanos, he's dead. He has no reason to live. But Thanos is dead in this video. This seems to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, like, and they made him part of a race, uh, like a different species or whatever, and stuff like that. Well, that was so, cool. Looking back I would on that love now. to hear, I would love to see what James Gunn's version of where Drax come, where, where Drax come from, and I didn't get that, and that's my that's my only upset is that I never got that because they completely changed that character, which I get why they did it, and I'm not bitching about that. I just wanted to see that story real quick. Uh, is Rocket is Rocket's story stay the same from the comic books? It is okay because uh, that's what I knew. But by the way, it is it, it's close enough. Now you guys, you guys, we're not going to give anything away, but you will cry several times if you have any connection to these characters, at least once, at least once. Yeah. You, you're gonna, you're gonna cry. You're gonna jiggle your stuff. You're gonna make out with the random person next to you. Wait a minute, no, that's a different movie. No, this, this, um, anyway, you, you, you might, you might, uh, you might get your hand on your shoulder from the person next to you. It's already right. 
It's all right. Yeah, this this movie um, it was really in depth. Uh, the bad guy, the high evolutionary, was amazing. Oh man, high evolutionary. If you don't know, um, is a character that's all about perfection, and the way the MCU has created him, I believe we're going to see more of him in the future. I uh, well, or maybe not. I mean, maybe he was killed. I, I <laughs> actually have a whole theory on this, and we'll talk about it in the spoiler section. What did you think about uh, Adam Warlock like, finally, finally showing up? Because you've been talking to this guy yeah. forever. Because if you don't know, if you don't know who Adam Warlock is in comics, guys, Adam Warlock is literally uh, he could kick Superman's ass. Yeah, yeah. You've you've talked about him. I think since the first Guardians of the Galaxy, I'm wondering where yeah, the well, fuck I mean, Adam Warlock is at. <laughs> Do you see that, Chris? What yeah, is that? That's what, Adam Warlock in the middle. What comic book is that? That's what, the Infinity what? War. Infinity War. He didn't show yeah, yeah, up there, though. The Infinity War. <laughs> yeah. You were waiting yeah, for him to show up yeah. there that he did not. <laughs> yeah. Huh? He didn't show up in any four Infinity War. You were waiting for that. Yeah, yeah. Did you see him in any of those Infinity War movies? No. Endgame? No. Nothing like that? No. No, no. At any point, did he just walk up into a place and go, hey, man, I, I can put on the gauntlet like it's nothing. <laughs> No, do you remember that? No, do you remember that? I don't remember that at all. Yeah. We'll talk about that in the spoiler section as well, guys, because I got a lot to say about the Adam Warlock character and how they portrayed him and stuff like you that. You want to get to quotes? But I like the fact that they made him young enough oh. that he can be in the next phase. Okay, okay. Because literally that does fit in to what he's supposed to be and what he is. And so, I mean... I'm going to tell you guys, literally, I I have researched the hell of this thing. Like, I don't even know how big this page is of information I have here. Let's see. I have a lot. I have a lot to give you. But we'll talk about that after we get to Yeah, yeah. But this way, um, the movie was great. It is good. It's the last time you're going to see the Guardians together. You might see each one of them in separate movies and separate things and separate entities. In fact, it's actually been hinted at. That they're already in several things yeah. going forward. Yeah, we'll talk about the most great scene at the end of this. Yeah, we'll take it. We'll talk about that here in a moment. But here, let's give some quotes. Let's give our um, our <laughs> scores and then move on. Now, I remember, I was in a dark theater, <laughs> book theater, IMAX. You know, yeah, the whole thing. Come on, Max, dance! Only idiots dance. You're a bad dog. Uh-huh. Kill one stupid guy no one loves. Now you just let's kill just one guy. Just one guy. One stupid guy that nobody loves. Now you're just making it sad. <laughs> He's your best friend. Second best friend. That is a good this whole time. I have no idea what I wrote. Uh, we have but one goat. We have but one goat. Create the perfect. We have but one goal. Sorry, it looks like goat. We have but one goal. Create the perfect being for the perfect society. I am going to jail for killing him. Mantis, you asshole. Hi, my name is Patrick Swayze. <laughs> Kill the one who looks like a cabbage to show you mean business. <laughs> yeah, he is some douchebag who carved my best friend, second best friend. <laughs> uh, yesterday, I made yesterday. I made a poop in the shape of a fish. <laughs> uh, which means it's a trap. No, it's a face-off. That's his fault. He should have known. I don't do anything for anyone that tells me. <laughs> uh, Earth would be a good place without the ignorance and bigotry. <laughs> It's not a trap. It's a face-off. Damn. I am Groot. He makes us high and loves him like he's some liability. Uh, The story has been yours all along, and you didn't even know it. 
Go to hell, you sick son of a bitch. She's a good dog. There's no good... Oh, there's no God. That's why I stepped in. Everyone deserves a second chance. They don't want to make things perfect. You just hate everything that is. I love you guys. I love you. That's it. That's all, all I right, got. What's your score on this? 4.6. Probably one of the best Marvel movies ever made. Oh, um, well, you were just literally. saying that you had problems with it earlier. Oh, no. I said I have a problem that it, it's kind of just me nagging. And I said that. Okay. It's all just right. me nagging. I love this movie. It's a 4.6 for me, too. I love This is my favorite. Like, this is probably my second favorite Marvel movie. Or third favorite. Ever. 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 Um, Did you ever... Did you ever see it with your face? I saw it with my face on Monday. So, um, um, Neil, I'm on RottenTomatoes.com. What is the audience score for Guarantee of the Valley Galaxy Volume 3? Uh, has to be at least 87%. 95%. 95%. Audience says, I'll taking, drink to that, guys. Uh, taking the team in a darker direction without sacrificing heart or humor. Guardians of, the Galaxy, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 ends the trilogy on an entertaining high note. Now, what do the critics have to say about Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3? 79. 81%. Ah, oh, it's off only by two. Critics and Sisters <laughs> is a galactic group of hug that might squeeze a little too tight in the heartstrings. The final Guardians of the Galaxy is a loving last hurrah for the MCU's most ragtag family. All right, guys. Um... We have a lot to talk about. That's it for the non-spoiler part. So, guys, you guys watching right there, I see you. I see you. I see you. We are going to the spoiler section of this movie. But what will we uh, see we next week? Spo- um, I don't know. Yeah, we're seeing, the, tell me, we're seeing the Hypnotic and the Mother, our Benefer episode. Because <laughs> Ben Affleck, ben Affleck so shares, stares. Oh, yeah, we're doing the Benefer thing, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah we're doing the Benefer thing. Ben Affleck uh, ben stars ben in the Hypnotic. The theater and J-Lo's at uh, Netflix. Yeah. So, yeah, we're doing... We're watching Benefo. Benefer. <laughs> yeah. We just call it the Benefer episode. But yeah, that's next week. And that, that we get that we get that series. But yeah, if you guys want to tune next week for our Benefer episode. So thank you guys. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we'll see you guys soon. So at but- this point, Chris is going to play, at this point, Chris is going to play a clip of my uh, favorite thing that I've ever heard that I, I handed over to him to play for one of the actors in this movie. He knows exactly what clip I sent him that I I'm going to play. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. Yeah, you do. What? Which one is that? And after that, spoilers. Which, which one are we playing? Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Is I gave you all those clips. Look at them and just think about it. You should know me well enough by now. <sighs> Don't know what you want me to play. Makes me sad, Chris. Makes me sad. Hold, hold, hold on. Is it? Is it? I am group. Is that it? <laughs> no, that's not it. But <laughs> good, good for trying. Good. That's one for trying. You dare that one? No. Drop it. That one. I, I mean, come on, man. I'm losing faith in you at this point. You gave me so many clips, I don't know which one. I know. That's why this is kind of a game. But there's only nine <laughs> people to choose from. Choose one. Is it Bradley Cooper one? No. Is it? It's not Zoe Saldana. It can't be. It's not. I am Mantis. Right? No. It's not Sean. It can't be. It can't be. Thanks. Yes. Uh, Captain. Now just show me how to work this thing. Well, the turny thing there makes the songs go up and down. It's made by primitive people. That is primitive. Show you some of my favorites. It's got Traffic. That's really good. They have some good songs. Thin Lizzy is a group I like a lot. There's a lady on there named Alice Cooper that I like a lot. She seems kind of angry, but kind of like stuff how we felt when we were kids, you know? Cat. There's a cat. Yeah. 
All right. Uh, I love that. I love that. There's an Alice Cooper lady on there. Seems very angry. It's so like the stuff, you know, that we talk about when we're young. I love that. It's like one of my favorite parts of the entire. Uh, all right. Anyway. I, mean, I laughed so hard when I found that clip, dude. So did you? All right. Did now the ammo. So first, you, okay, you first, let's just do this. Let's just get it out of the. Get, let's get this part out of the way. Let's get this done. All right. Any questions, Chris? It seems all pretty self-explanatory, but do you think the high evolution is really dead? I don't know, mm-hmm. and the reason why. Are you ready for this? Mm-hmm. I think that's how you bring in the X-Men. Oh, yeah? Because what's the high evolutionary one to do? He wants to create the perfect world. Create the perfect person, not the perfect world. The perfect world is just he needed a planet to put people on, right? Yeah. So the high evolutionary always wants to, uh, you know, this guy right here always wants to be I know. Doesn't he look completely different yeah, than yeah, comic book world? Yeah. Here, here you go. We'll put. We'll do a side by side. There you go. Um, but he always wants to be the wants to create the perfect beings. So how do you evolute? Ev- uh, you know, get to evolution. The next stage of evolution is the X Men mutation. Like yeah. said, yeah, mutation. So I think that's where we get the X Men because the. I mean, this guy has been one of the big biggie bad 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 guys for decades i mean here he is fighting oh i don't know galactus the planet <laughs> eater you know yeah the the high evolutionary has all these kind of powers and so i mean it's awesome so okay um guys do you want me what would you go ahead now, now like uh, in the comic books the the guardians continue out on without you know Quill and Drax and 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 uh, Nebula and Gamora and and uh, Mantis. And yeah, you know why? Why? Okay, I'm gonna show you why. You ready? Mm-hmm. Um, which one of those guys is in that group? <laughs> None of them. Okay, cool. Which one are in that group? Uh, none of them. Okay. Which one is in that group? Mantis. That's Mantis it. Mantis and Drax. That's oh, yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Drax Mantis and Drax. Mantis and Drax. Yeah. Yep. Um, here's the little one they remade after the movie came out. So this is the remake of that. If you, as you see, Drax is uh, gray because Drax has always been green. He he's gray because James Gunn is like there's too many green people. Yeah, it's Gamora. Yeah, you mean difficult. Yeah. But here's the original. And this is the two. original Guardians of the Galaxy. And none Do you of see them, yeah, one no. person. I don't see one person that's in that. Yeah. So here's the killer part. Okay, there's. Are you ready for this? That's Peter and Rocket, and I see Gamora. I see. Yep. Yep. There's a couple people in yeah. that one. Mm-hmm. And here here's another one. That not a single of one of them are in that one. So how how did James Gunn pick the the ones he wanted? You know, I, I don't know. They probably gave him like the right. You know, I that's that's a thing I didn't look up and I should have. Yeah, and I apologize for that, but I did not look it up. Um, but uh, let's go over a few things I do have information on. So let's okay. get over. Let's get through the. Let's get through the stuff that you know I wrote down and okay. I freaking went through. Uh, from the credits, we saw the Guardians of the Galaxy had a clip uh, of the comic that said Showtime A-Holes, which <laughs> is a throwback to also the opening of uh, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2 when Peter says it. Mm-hmm. But you see the clip of the actual comic book that he got it from. Um when the hand reaches in to get Rocket, it looks like the infamous painting of Man Touches God or the Creation of Adam by yeah. Michelangelo. Mm-hmm. Uh, nowhere is their headquarters like in the comics. That That's actually in the holiday special, the head of a Celestial, which a Celestial is big beings from the internals, or Peter's dad, Ego, yeah. which he's half Celestial. Um. 
They bought Nowhere from the collector. They stated that in the holiday special. They didn't state it here, so if you guys didn't know, that's where that is. Uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, um, the sign that they were putting up mm -hmm. in front of that top of that bar was the Guardians of the Galaxy sign, but it was in the Cree language. Mm. So that's why it looked like it, and you're like, is that Japanese? Like, you know, <laughs> what, what is it that they're saying there? Um so uh, they even mentioned that they are like the new police of the galaxy because Thanos destroyed Xandar, mm -hmm. which is where the Nova was in the first Guardians of the Galaxy. Right. You know, John C. Riley with his like, yeah. I don't think anybody's 100% a dick. Yeah. You know, like, <laughs> that guy. Uh, you see them use the Zoom, the gift given by Yondu, um, just like right before he died, just like his mother gave him the music tape. Uh, right when she was dying. So that's why he's so defensive of it. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. The new Guardians that were introduced was the core of Craiglin and Cosmo. Now, Cosmo the dog yeah. has been part of the Guardians God, of the Galaxy we love for Cosmo. a long time. We're big fans yeah. of Cosmo. Now, he was a dog sent to the outer space by the Russians because yeah. the first animal ever sent to space was like a, a dog. Like a... And uh, in the comics, he's a boy. Mm -hmm. In the movies, he's a girl. They might have Maria or, Bakova, by the way. This voice for yeah, yeah. So, um, and he's he got hit with um, cosmic rays, like the cosmic rays sure. that the Fantastic Four got uh -huh. hit by. So he's telekinetic, telepathic, energy based, uh, light, uh, laser forms. And is you know who he is voiced by? As Maria Bakova. I just said that. Right? Yeah, Maria <laughs> Blakov from uh, the, or the uh, Borat Borat Two. Um, again, people, Gamara is Gamara from the end game and not Gamara from that. So make sure you understand that going into this movie. Um, I already talked about the whole beginning of Guardians of Galaxy 1, 2, and 3 and why that they're all that way. Mm -hmm. um, now, the name of the ship. Did you hear what the name of the ship was? No. What was it named? The new name, name of the ship is Bowie. Oh, okay. All right. Because, you know, Peter's a big fan of mm -hmm. Ziggy Stardust yeah, and David Bowie. Um, Mantis tells Peter it's wrong for her to use her abilities to manipulate him, to make him happy at the beginning. Yeah. But then leaks that she's been doing it the whole time <laughs> to Drax yeah. the entire time they've been friends. So that's kind of a, yeah. you know, stuff. Now, all right, here we go. The introduction of the one, the only, the most powerful being in all of Marvel, almost. And the guy that we call, originally was called him. And this is his first panel as him. He was um, first created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby in Fantastic Four 66 67, uh, September, October 1967, as him. Then he was recreated into Adam Warlock by Roy Thomas, and that'd be this comic right here, by Roy Thomas and Gail Kane in Marvel premiere number one in 1972. That is the wrong comic. Um, and I don't think I got the right comic in here. Gosh dang it, I hate when that happens. Uh, yeah, I forgot to grab the right comic. Okay, all right. But anyway, but that's one of the Warlock comics. Um. One of the most powerful members of the Marvel Universe, a cocoon he uses to repower himself, immortal with the... He has the soul gem literally in his forehead. Yeah. So like how like uh, Vision, Vin right? Vision has the power gem in his head, he has the soul gem in his head, which he uses to manipulate and use. Um, the soul stone is stuck, it sucks off life energy. So he's kind of like a vampire. Yeah. Or like Thanos, where he goes and sucks up life energy. But this is not people. this is not that uh, Marvel we've seen in Guardians of the Galaxy. Yeah, yeah, the same Marvel, and this ain't the power. They don't have the Soul Gem in them. Now, um, the Soul Gem for Adam Warlock um, gave him great powers, and it gave him the ability to even wield the the Infinity Gauntlet, the comic books. He was the guy that saved everybody in Infinity War. So in Adam Warlock is he a good guy in the comic books? He's Nothing and everything all at once. Okay. Okay. So let me explain it to you. 
When he got the uh, the Infinity Gauntlet from Thanos, he snagged it from him. Galmora and Nebula helped him, and a group of, you know, I, I, you know, the whole fucking group, you know, the group, yeah, 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 you know, this group, this uh-huh. whole group <laughs> helped him, right? And um, and so they're like, so the first thing he did with the Infinity Gauntlet was make it so he did not know. Uh, good, and he expelled all good and all evil from himself. So, so neutral, he's like, neutral. so he's like, start. He's like a uh, Spock. Okay. It's all logic. Okay. It's all logic. And then he created the Infinity Team, or known as the Infinity Watch, and gave each member one of the stones to watch. Okay. Notice, but anybody in there you might know. Uh, do I see Green Goblin there? No, that's not Green Goblin. Oh, Who am I looking for? Okay, well, you, you, there's three of them right there that you don't know. Okay, because see this is the comic book version. Okay, well. So the lady with the, the hair, mm-hmm. with the hair all the way on his shoulder. Yeah. That's Gamora. Okay. The green guy in the purple and behind him mm-hmm. is Drax. Wow, Okay. <laughs> The girl with the green high collar and the bald is Nebula. What? Okay. Yeah. So three members of the Infinity Watch were three people because he didn't want Thanos to get. Yeah. And then they had a whole line, Warlock and the Infinity Watch. Great, you know. And he's pretty much immortal, pretty much whatever. The Enclave, the Enclave is the ones that built him on Earth. To make him the perfect being, which is cool because the sovereign in the movies yeah. were looking for perfection. Mm-hmm. So, like, to you know, you kind of equal it. And the Enclave look exactly like the high evolutionary guys. Oh, but the counterpart, like the, or like, yeah. Like, uh, yeah. Okay, cool. The counter, gotcha. Um, so then let's talk about high evolutionary real quick. Mm-hmm. High Evolutionary, again, was created by Stanley Jack Kirby. First appearance, Mighty Thor 134, November 1966. Uh, what did he look like? He looked like this is what he looked like in his first appearance. Mm. Uh, his He is actually, nobody knew that he was human. And that's one thing I didn't like about how they represented him because he had a helmet on. And then at the end, it takes off and they're like, oh, he's just human. Yeah, he's just a human. He's scientist Herbert Edgard Wyndham, a genetic scientist from England who wants to create the perfect being or expand evolution. Created a place for his experiments called Wendigore, which they made the Counter Earth. Mm. Yeah, is Wendigore. He was obsessed and learned with Doctor X. Do you know who Doctor X is? That's Doctor Minister Sinister. In the X Men world, okay, he worked with Doctor Doom. He worked with, um, he made Jessica Drew Spider Woman with his stuff. Yeah, so he made Spider Woman because of him. Uh, he created Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. He quick created both of the twins for Magneto. Like that's why I think he's the dude that will be the one that introduces X Men, X Men to okay. us. Cool. Now. All right, so we don't deep dive too much in that and bore you to death because Chris is already looking like he's his face is spaced to nowhere. Like he has like, what part did you cry? That's what I want to know. <laughs> when they're torturing poor fucking Rocket, man. How about when he went to <laughs> when he was uh, dying and he went to see his he went to see Teef's, uh Floor and and Lila. Oh gosh! Yeah. God, I was fucking. I was yeah, yeah. blubbering Ooh, hard. That was, that was blubbering that was hard. hard. All right, Nebula's new arm of nanotech <laughs> was a gift from Rocket after she gave him Bucky's arm in the Holiday movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, Craglin is having issues because uh, he sees he sees himself as a lesser Yondu, and it, even he even had silver teeth, and Yondu had gold teeth, like literally that much of a difference. Um, Adam beats down Drax uh, in the same spot that Ronan beat him down in Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Wow. Uh, Adam, oh, wait a minute. 8-9-P-1-13 can be seen on the subject screen for Rocket back when they were arrested 
in Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 1. Oh, wow. On the little screen. Yeah. And and Lila is one of his, uh, on the same screen in Guardians 1, is one of his um, um, compadres. Um, associates. Associates, known associates, like group. Um, in the comics, Lila was his love interest. Uh, she was from a, a world of that where people were half human, ha- animal bred. And she was like half and, otter. Yeah, she was half otter and animal bred, and um, which is kind of seen in their love interest in this. I cried so fucking hard when she died too. I was just like, like this is just oh, tearing I me know. apart. Oh, oh my god! I see Teus and uh, four died too. I was like, this is why? Why would you do this to me? But um. Yeah, I cried a lot during this because uh, it's hard for me to see animals get abused. Hard for me to see animals like, like they're just so fucking cute, man. It's, not, it's now here we go. You ready for this? Yeah. Two major things of foreshadowing happened during this movie. Did you catch them? Okay, what are they? I mean, like foreshadowing tells you, like gives you hints of what's gonna happen. So, what is the foreshadowing you saw? First, Drax says. We're going to kill one lonely, stupid guy. Some guy that nobody loves. And then he, uh, uh, Peter, Peter Quill's like, yeah, you're just making it sad. There's only one guy that dies the whole time, and it's a lonely technician dude that they had to rip the stuff off to go find the raccoon who is lonely, has no friends, oh, and yeah. they make it very clear through the entire movie he has no friends and nobody likes him. <laughs> and there's one guy that nobody loves, stupid guy. That was exactly who it was. Then, are you ready for the next one? Yeah. Okay. All the movie, the entire movie. I said it twice already. Um, but I know it was said more times than that. Peter. Oh, yeah, here we go. Here we go. I actually made it one of the spoiler facts. Are you ready? Mm-hmm. Okay, Peter clarifies it multiple times that it's not a trap. It's a face-off. At the end, they take the face-off the magnet. The antagonist, yeah. Did you? <laughs> they literally ripped the yeah. face off of the guy they're fighting. Like literally, the whole movie he's like he's like it's not it's not a trap, it's a face off. <laughs> uh Drax used his first ever metaphor. Oh yeah. Uh <laughs> which he's not allowed to use metaphors. That's part of his character. They yeah. even say it stated in the first movie. Mm-hmm. Um the orgoscope, that planet weird yeah. thing that you go to is a place grown from organic tissue. Um, it's home to the attribute lab, uh, laboratories. Um, okay. Now this is a cool part and you didn't even catch it because you don't read the comics and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. And that's okay. Everybody doesn't need to know everything to love what it is. Galmora shows up. Are you ready for this? Yeah. With the OG fucking Guardians of the Galaxy. Oh, yeah. The originals. <laughs> the original um, lineup of the original Guardians of the Galaxy. So she shows up for the with the ones that are still alive or not a million dollars to fucking rehire. Mm-hmm. So let's go with the ones that she showed up with first. She showed up with St- Stallone, who is Tokar, which is a.k.a. Starhawk, the original leader of the Guardians of the Galaxy. That's who Stallone plays. Matronix, uh, whose voice, uh, which is the icy, diamondy looking mm-hmm. guy that is voiced by Michael Rosenbaum. Um, yeah, he's on that Lex Luthor from Smallville. Main, yeah, <laughs> awesome. And Mainframe, who is re- uh, voiced originally by Miley Cyrus, the floating mm-hmm. mechanical head, um, but who did not return and was voiced by Tara Strong, aka female Loki from the Loki series. Yeah. Now, the ones that did not return are obvious, and this is the reasons why. One was Vin Rames as Charlie 27, who was in in Volume 2 of Guardians of the Galaxies. And let me find the picture so you know which one. who the, This guy right here in the yellow in the middle, uh-huh. he, Vin Rames played him. Oh, okay. and the other. And the guy in the glass is Michael, Michael Rosenbaum. Yeah. You know, all right. So then the other person that we missed 
was Ali Ogard, and it's because I don't know the person that played her um, kind of went and won a lot of awards this past year, uh, like mainly all the awards. Who was it? Michelle. <laughs> Michelle Yeoh. Yo? Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh yeah. So. So that that is the original Guardians. So when she shows up with the scav with the Ravagers, like literally, though most of those people are the original Guardians <laughs> of the Galaxy. So that was cool. Um, evolutionary high evolutionary creates a Ninja Turtle. <laughs> that was weird. Yeah. Uh, Nathan Fallian and Michael Roker are in every James Gunn movie that he's directed. Well, Nathan Fallian's great. This is Michael Roker. Yeah. Uh, including this one now. Um, you see a person eating an Orlean, which is the same lizard that uh, Quill kicks at the first beginning of <laughs> Guardians of the Galaxy 1. Uh, Jennifer Holland, a.k.a. Harcourt from Peacemaker, uh, or Shazam, Fear of the Gods, is a guard that walks in on Nathan Fillion when the weird shit's happening. Mm-hmm. Uh, Statue of Liberty is by a Purdu- is replaced by High Evolutionary holding a monkey, saying that, that all species el- evolve from monkeys. Um, the first f bomb in a Disney Marvel movie. Get in the fucking car. Open the fucking door. <laughs> uh, yeah, open the fucking door. Sorry. In Peter's backpack, we had Panther from the Thundercats, the Garbage Pail Kids, and Alf, alien life form, <laughs> trading cards. Shelby the Walrus has a Cockney accent, which is original. Originally, Rocket. Rocket's the one that has an, that act, kind of accent. He's the Brooklyn accent comic. instead. So yeah, because he's you know yeah. Bradley Cooper. Uh, Peter called High Evolutionary a cross between RoboCop and Skeletor because he wears a lot of purple like Skeletor, and his face is stretched like RoboCop. Makes sense. <laughs> I don't have many more, so you're you're good. Okay. Uh, the little girl joins the team is uh, Pi Lavelle, or also known as Pi Lavelle, uh, Pi Vell, Pi La, Pi La Vell. Um, in the comics, is the third person, uh, the fourth character to hold the title of uh, Captain Marvel. Oh wow! Do you think that'll show up later or no? I have no idea, <laughs> but yes, I do. One hundred. One thing I did see is that the the Pi Lavelle is much different. The comic books, like she's much older, and that mm-hmm. she's uh, yeah, she's this comes from like a line of like, really but you gotta think, when are we gonna see her next? Mm-hmm. I mean, because the Avengers movie is years away, bro. yeah, yeah, but we are gonna, these people are gonna have plenty of time to grow up, yeah. Sitting at the poker table was Howard the Duck, the broker yep. in Cosmos the Dog. Chris Fairbanks plays broker, aka from Andor, and the guy who makes Michael Keaton tell him, I'm Batman. <laughs> who are you? Oh yeah, I'm Batman. <laughs> that's who that guy, the guy who played the broker. Oh, that's funny. that guy. Uh, Rocket says that he was indeed a raccoon. It finds out that he was indeed a raccoon from North America and embraces it by finally calling himself Rocket Raccoon. Yeah. Um, Groot, I love you guys. Is to the audience saying that, hey man, you've been with them long enough now. That you know what he's saying. Yeah, we you know, we, we didn't fear that. Like, we didn't mention that as we were walking out of the movie theater. She's like, yeah. She's like, well, it's so we've been with him so long. It's like you can understand him now. And I was like, yeah, okay. Um, and literally, uh, that has been verified by James Gunn. Yeah. So one hundred percent. That's why nobody reacted like he just said first time talking. Yeah. 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 Uh, newspapers. Uh, talk in the in one of the after scenes. Um, the newspaper talks about Kevin Bacon talking about his alien abduction, which is from the holiday special. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And Lila says somebody has a plan for Rocket. Uh, Lila says somebody has a plan for uh, a Rocket, which could be the one above all, which is Marvel's version of God, um, who is Jack Kirby. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Like okay. literally several yeah. times in comic books. Yeah. Like there's one where Fantastic Four like get on out of the comic and they like, oh, you're the one above all. And it's just like Jack Kirby sitting at a desk. And several times they've hinted <laughs> that the god of Marvel is Jack Kirby. Yeah. Which is awesome because Stan Lee had to okay that. <laughs> yeah. Um Um or it could be the Living Tribune, because the Living Tribune mm-hmm. has been uh literally, you know, you see 
things of the Living Tribune everywhere. Eternity, Thor, you know, and Thor from Love and Thunder, which, you know, don't know. But it might be, it might be Kane, mm. the Conqueror, that's uh, actually making sure are they gonna get a different that Kane? Rocket does everything. Because, no, it won't be Kane from Ant-Man. It'd be Kane from Loki. Mm. The uh the what was the name? Uh the, he who remains. Mm -hmm. He who remains. Because he's the one that was trying to fix the timeline and keep it in that straight line and not have any branches. And so keeping Rocket alive makes that timeline keep going. Well, I'm thinking they need a different actor, right? They got to. I have no idea, bro. Mm -hmm. I have no idea what they're gonna do with that. And and to be honest, it sucks. I don't know how you can become I, I just don't get it. I don't get it. Like, I, I mean, by any means, I don't know, understand star, you know, yeah. like that. I don't understand how that, that kind of celebrity gets to you because I've never been that level of celebrity. I've been higher level of celebrity than I am now. But like, it's just like, man, I cannot imagine what goes through your head. You know, maybe at a God complex. Hell if I know. But to be honest, that's 100% the spoilers, man. Because uh, besides that, I don't real think quick. there's more. I mean, real I quick. can give you really quick. Yeah, really quick. Let's do this. Here you go. That's what Drax looks originally. That's what Mantis looks like originally. This is what Groot looks like originally. That is what Nebula looks like originally. And, of course, you got to do the one, the only. There, there's Star-Lord originally or the remake of Star-Lord which they made it in the comics. There's Cosmos, literally okay. identical. Quick and question. Of course... Oh, go ahead. Rocket. <laughs> so ahead. the end of this movie said Star-Lord will return. Where's he returning him? Where's he going to show up in next, you think? Dude, he could be an Avenger. Because Star-Lord's been an Avenger before. Yeah. He could be in a Spider-Man movie. He could be, I, you know, like literally, hey man, what movie coming up in Marvel's repertoire will you be upset if Chris Bratt just randomly shows up in? None of them. I'll be happy about it. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Like there's just like so many, if, if Deadpool just starts showing up in every fucking movie now. Fine with it. Because they, yeah, we're good with it. Like 100%. All right, man. But yeah, man. That's all of it. I mean, I I try to I try to narrow it down a little bit. I did read a lot, so if you had any random questions, I was going to be able to be able to knock uh, them out of the Yeah, if you guys want to email Neil after this, he'll be glad to answer your questions. <laughs> Or right. or go to or or literally on Facebook or YouTube, ask any one of the questions literally in that we get those notifications, guys. Mm -hmm. I'll go there and I'll answer those questions for you. Or if you even one, you can throw a few shekels at just Patreon and it's you there. But um, you can find someone. Are you killing someone? Is someone dying? No, you, uh, honey's excited that you lose some. You go to W2Mnet.com, uh, W2Mnet.com. It's a net, net we're a part of. You guys can find us there. We're also Facebook at Facebook. So I said Facebook, right? Twitter and DS Podcast. We're on Instagram and DS. In the TS podcast, we're also on um on Patreon, Patreon console streams don't suck. We're also at Bonfire. If you find merch to Bonfire console streams don't suck. Something you'll find us there, and wherever you find podcasts, where you find podcasts, you find movies don't suck. It's something new. Now, what do we do for small businesses? Uh small businesses now. What do we do? Oh, I was drinking a lot. Yeah. Anyway. Small business, if you got a small business, make sure to give us the information. Send that information right over to us. We'll be more than happy to go over things with you, um, to advertise you to our thousands of listeners or millions of followers. Make sure, send us that information. We'll be more than happy. All right. Is it good? We're good to go. Let's get out of here. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, listeners of all lunches, that's a new episode of Movies That Don't Suck and Some Do. My name is Neil. And I'm Chris. I remember, guys... Take care of each other. Take care of your friends. Take care of your family. Take care of your loved ones. Because guess what? That makes us all guardians of this galaxy. Have a good night.